Good morning. Uh, welcome to uh, the Virtual Photography Show. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, I'm James Loder from the uh, Sony UK and Ireland uh, imaging team. Um, I've been very uh, privileged to be joined this morning by uh, Jed Lester and Tom Lovelock, two um, very, very, very strong, powerful uh, sports photographers uh, at, the, at the top of their game. And they are here to basically help um, to demystify a little bit about sports photography and, and how they go about it. Um, just to mention, we do have the chat facility available. Uh, so if you look to the right of the, uh, the viewing window here, you'll have a ask a question. So you can ask questions there. We will pick that up towards the end of the session. So we'll, we'll let the guys uh, uh, talk and we'll pick up your questions at the end of the session. There's also um, a chat function for the generic um, Sony chat, which you can find. So you don't, you know, don't if you miss out here asking a question, you can ask it over there. And that's on the main uh, photography show uh, website. So that's that's the kind of admin piece done. Um, so introductions. Yeah, we've got Jed uh, in the in the red shirt there. Give us a wave, Jed. <laughs> and then we've got Tom, uh, who's against the grey background. Look, you, you look a bit. Small there, Tom. Look a little bit. Little no, come bit closer. Long. Yeah, come closer. Yeah, there we go. I can see your face. So, um, yeah, thanks for joining, guys. Really appreciate it. I, I know it's difficult on on a Sunday morning to um, to get time to to take out and and have a chat like this uh, when you've got little people around. But um, firstly, we just wanted to to kind of uh, get an idea of what got you into photography in the first place for for a start, and why specifically sports photography. Um, I'll start. Uh, okay. Jed. Um, I've been, yes, I've been probably freelance uh, sports photographer for 20 years or so. Um, and before that, uh, before six, seven years before that, I would probably kind of jack of all trades in photo photography, uh, working in photography, uh, either on a picture desk or working for a magazine or working in a photo archive or being a technician developing films and stuff like that. Um, and currently I work for, uh, shoot live sport for Shutterstock, shooting Premier League and rugby and stuff like that. And the All England Club for Wimbledon and the MCC the Lords, anything at Lords Cricket Ground, really. Um, and I would say, what uh, regarding what got me into photography, uh, sports photography, was I don't think I wanted to do anything else, really. And uh, I didn't really consider doing any other um, news or landscape or anything like that. Um, I was into doing sport, and I completely and utterly started at the bottom gain the experience and work, worked up the ladder really um to do what i do now so that that starting at the bottom was was what did you i mean did you study photography or did you do anything like that or was it more about going out and actually practicing uh it was probably uh, a mixture of both uh, i did a i did a foundation course uh in photography but solely so that I would have access to equipment and stuff like that. Um, I didn't really do any of the work. I just used the equipment all the time and created a folio from that, which completely got me in the door, admittedly at, at the bottom run, um, uh, at, uh, for a job basically, starting at the bottom, junior, technician or um, or junior photographer but it was completely starting at the bottom gaining experience every day effectively and I would also say at any point putting my hand up to do other stuff that frankly wasn't in my role but I would do it anyway and then mm. over time it would kind of become my role really so you kind of instigate it for yourself uh, and change, kind of change your job so that you do what you, um, a more fat, photographic led uh, role. Mm, okay. And uh, how about you, Tom? Was it similar for you? Was it um, a, a kind of immediate passion? 
No, no. I, 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 I basically I studied photography at university, um, and I didn't really know. I knew I wanted a career in photography, but I didn't really know which sort of area I really, really loved. So I decided to just go and assist as many photographers as I possibly could. Fashion photographers, underwater photographers, still life photographers. And then I, I hadn't really thought about being a sports photographer at this point until I had a phone call out of the blue from a sports photographer asking me to go to Italy with him and assist him at the World Downhill Grass Skiing Championships. And okay. I thought, wow, this actually exists. What a great <laughs> thing to do. So packed the bags, went off to the event and just, I was sold. I was like, what a great job to have. And so did, did that, um, I mean, him reaching out or, or you getting, getting to go and do that, is that as a result of you kind of um, trying to, to network as much as you could? So following uh, other photographers that are inspiring you that, that were out there shooting, um, you know, I, I don't know, were you, um, were you contacting them, you know, you know call, cold calling them almost to, to kind of say, look, if you've got a job and you need an assistant, I'd, I'd be really willing yeah. to help. Or... Absolutely, absolutely. And also photographers all talk to each other and share assistance and ask for good people. And that's what happened to me. I was working for an act actually an underwater photographer that this sports photographer was friends with. And he said, try my guy out. And that's kind of where I went into it. Okay. Is it, I mean, do you find that, um, and this is to, to both of you guys, do you find that the, the community is really, um, uh, you know, you look after each other or, or is it very competitive? Is it, you know, well, oh, I'm not going to talk to him. I can't talk to, to her. I, I don't want them to get my, my client or my secrets or, or whatever. Is it, is it collaborative or, or not? Um, I mean, I personally talk to everyone. Um, and you obviously get to know what people can and can't do and then you can either tap into that or frankly use them on jobs that where you need help other photographers and stuff um but i would say but also just i mean you're right it, it is i suppose there is a rivalry but it's uh, we all do the you know the same uh the same we're all in it together i suppose i mean in, it's in slightly different to tom the um uh the notion of ringing round the I, I i've never rung anyone it's just it's just kind of being there and being doing a job hopefully well and being i don't know nice and you, you just it, it's not a massive pool of people so therefore, if people know you or seen seen your work, then you um, you know periodically you just get, get receive the phone calls basically. But and do you um, do you think that there's you know do you do you find pressure to try and get something different from from the other the other photographers? Are you? Are you conscious of the fact that you know oh i need i need to come up with a different angle i can't just shoot it like this because you know or or is that kind of stuff more um defined by who you're shooting for so you know jed you might be shooting for for shutterstock tom you might be shooting for sports illustrated i, I would presume those two entities might have quite different um briefs to, to you guys so is, is there you know is there a um, something that really guides you in terms of well, I've got to go and do it like this. Are you told that by the client or um, are you constantly looking to be um, unique and doing something that's, that's different to everybody else? I, I think it's a bit of both. You know, you have to weigh it up. Of course, everyone wants the winning picture of Roger Federer winning Wimbledon, but also around that, I think it's really important for me, at least I, I try to, do something different every day and find a unique angle or um, you know, just work with the environment you're in to produce something that's just a bit different. Mm. I, um, the, I, I would say the only time I feel a bit of pressure 
is not when I'm working against people, it's when I'm working with people in a kind of large team. You don't want to look like the weak link, basically. So you're, it's, not, it's not the notion of trying to outdo each other at all, but you are completely aware that you are with for, uh, Wimbledon, for instance, you know, very, very, very good photographers and you, your work is being side by side judged by the editors um, every day, every hour, frankly. Um, and you want to match them and well, hopefully stand out. But that's the only time I feel as though I've got to get this right because otherwise I'm just going to look ridiculous. <laughs> but the, um, but uh, yes, the um, finding the different angle or the you know the different style of picture at a sporting event that we all know and uh, images we're used to is definitely a uh, a thing you try and do for something uh different but something that's always kind of um fascinated me it, you know i i've always worked in a in a kind of corporate environment so i've always had a a very you know monthly salary stable kind of uh, existence let's say um what always fascinates me about you guys is is being freelance and um not that knowledge of not knowing where the next paycheck's coming from i suppose um how do you you know to, to anybody that's looking to embark on a career uh, in photography or specifically sports photography how do you make sure that you um are putting yourself in the shop window making sure that um that you do have those opportunities of regular work coming coming through um to make sure that yeah you can you can pay the bills pay the mortgage and stuff um i mean i just sometimes i look back and i think how on a because because i i just when i speak to uh, non-photographers and describe uh, when they ask you know how um how does it work financially and i effectively suggest that every, every job could be my last um the or, or they'll say what what are you doing uh, next month or something and I, my usual answer is i don't know um but it'll always work it's work it it's always works out and you know you can see them metaphorically clutching their hearts as to well um not knowing in fact as you say where the next check's coming in from but it it comes out around to what I was saying about um, working, just being w working well with the clients and working well with your colleagues and just being civil and obviously um, trying to come up with good images. And it, all of that, hopefully, unless for some reason there's a massive global crisis um that uh, comes around that you the work continues basically because you have proved um you can do the job and hopefully it will, will continue i don't know what tom if tom agrees yeah i think you know uh, well i mean you and i have both been in this for you know 20 years so we've had the time to build up client base that rotates and we we work for all the time it just always seems to come in because we've got the reputations oh. but in the early days obviously it's 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 tougher to get the, the quantity of clients to get that paycheck every month um so yeah it's tough at the beginning but it's when you gain the experience it becomes a lot easier mm -hmm. And again, I guess it goes back to what you both said about having that, um, uh, co you know, constant communication amongst other photographers and that networking ability. And, and yeah, somebody might be saying, oh, well, actually, yeah, I, I'm not available for that job, but you want to yeah. go and ask Jed or Tom or, or whatever. That, and, that, and you get, yeah. get stuff like that come through as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so... I'm interested in kind of what a typical day would look like for you. Now, having had conversations like this before with a, a few other uh, photographers in, in different genres, um, of course, there isn't any typical kind of day, I suppose. Um, e every job is different. But what kind of, you know, what's in your head when you're thinking about preparing for, for a job? What, what 
how do you start the process, I suppose? Go ahead, Tom. Well, yeah, absolutely right. Every day can be so different. Um, it's, for me, it's about preparing for each day, you know, whether it's I'm up a mountain at a down, downhill ski event or at Wimbledon, you know, it's, every day has a different set of tools we need to get the job done, really. Um, and that might be, you know, just the extremities of the situation that you're working in. Um, so it's really, really about planning what you're photographing and be prepared for anything to change because you never know what's going to happen in sports photography. You never, well, not never know, but anything can happen at any time, you know. So it's just about being very prepared in your moment. So would you would you have a clear kind of I want to go and get this particular shot? Is is that something that you know when you've when you've been briefed a job or you've been given a job, is that something that you think, or are you turning up to the event and kind of letting things unfold and and deciding in the moment? Yeah, I think you. I certainly have an idea of pictures that I would like to create at certain events but it's not always possible you know some days we go if you go to Roland Garros and it's a cloudy day you're not going to get that beautiful sunlit shadowy picture um, mm -hmm. so you have to work with what you're in really yeah I appreciate that and Jed for you um, well I'd say well Following on from that, having seen the amount of suitcases Tom takes, uh, <laughs> he definitely plans and is prepared because he literally takes like a shop with him, um, but uh, for for good reason. But no, so mine's mine's the same, perhaps slightly smaller version because a lot of my work is in a um, like a football stadium, and you you know you can only sit in certain places. Uh, but obviously all stadium stadia are different. So I would, uh, I don't take all my gear at all, but I will will pick uh, len specific lenses for uh, specific venues, either um, whether I can do remote camera images. Um, so mine's definitely less so, but it's completely, um, you know, the night before, is uh, when you start planning and, you know, from charging your batteries to thinking, oh, right, what can I do? What can I do tomorrow uh, at the event? Um, but the, um, the every eventuality aspect that Tom mentioned is completely key. I mean, for, even from the, like the weather and I don't know, like, traffic and stuff like that it's um you know i've been completely drenched and i've been stuck in traffic and missed the first half you know it's just the it's just every single part from leaving your uh front door to um taking your first picture is is just very very important uh to the whole job and um I think, you know, because you shoot football and stuff like that, Jed, um, I guess you're, a lot of what you're doing with that, is it straight out of camera and, and straight to the, the picture desk? And um, and then you, so I don't know, for, uh, for example, after a match finishes, is that you you done? If you've been filing stuff during the match, are you, are you done? Or do you have to go yeah. back and revisit images and edit and stuff like that? Um, I, in the evening of the match, I'll always um well effectively do a second edit but yes during depending on who i'm working for the and depending on the uh level of the event the severity of the match i suppose um yes it's a mix probably 50 50 mixture of in uh sending in camera um so at the end of that particular match then arguably i'm done really because i've sent everything and the editor is um 
uh, captioning and editing the image. Uh, but sometimes I work from laptop. But we're talking, you know, as the match is going on, you know, five minutes into the match, I'm sending stuff. Um, I'm sending images immediately, aside from the preview images. But it, the soon as the whistle goes, uh, as soon as you get a shot, you start editing it and get get it over. Um, is that is that the same for you, Tom? Do you do you have that kind of pressure to get get stuff sent out immediately to the client, or is it more um, more considered stuff that you get to edit? And or again, does it vary depending on the event? It, it varies depending on the client, um, but yes, certainly there's a big pressure on you to get pictures out of the camera and to the picture desk very quickly you know and um, especially with now with social media and websites being so popular people want pictures very 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 quickly so yeah definitely so under understanding that and and having i suppose remotes as well and, and being able to understand that element of the technology um is kind of important because it you know, it's all well and good getting the picture, but I suppose if you can't get that picture to where it needs to be in, a, in any given time scale, then it's it's almost opportunity missed, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, I think probably people have seen enough of our faces for, for a little bit. It might be good to actually see some of your work. So I'm going to share, share my screen and... Um, I'd like you guys to, I think we're starting off with you, Tom, just to um, talk a little bit about these images and, and give us a, a flavour of, um, you know, how, how you got into this position, what your thinking was behind uh, behind framing the shot and, and so on. And yeah, just give us an insight into to the way that you work. Sure. So this is the men's mass start speed skating at the Youth Winter Olympics. Um, and this picture was taken actually on a frozen lake, which is pretty cool, um, in Samaritz. The, so this picture for me was quite a pivotal moment. It was when I actually decided that I wanted to use Sony cameras because I'd been trialing them. And then at this, this frame, is when I decided I would move over to Sony because the tracking at AF was just so incredible. I would I was able to if you've ever seen this event, they the athletes fly from one side of the course to the other, and the movement's so unpredictable. Getting sharp pictures is actually really tricky. But with the Sony camera, I was able to click the tracking focus onto one of these guys and it would just follow them around the screen so that was why i chose this picture really so that kind of meant that you could concentrate on framing the the shot rather than moving the camera around trying to keep the the oh. subject that you wanted you know sharp in the frame i guess yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so this this one so this same event same, same place it's the women's mass start um okay. and this is an example of how to make a nice background when you don't have one particularly um it's a slow shutter speed pan um inside the ring here is a lot of sort of white tents and tech stuff that actually isn't very visually pleasing but by using a slow shutter speed, I'm able to lose that, but still give a little bit of an element of where I am. Yeah, I think that that was going to be a question that I had actually is, is you know, how do you cope when you've got, yeah, something distracting in the background or, yeah. And, and actually, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have thought, of course, you, I can't see that there's those kind of tents and, you know, all that kind of, um, set up that you'd have at those these kind of events, but that is is not something that you necessarily want to uh, faithfully represent, it, you know, in full sharpness on the screen. But that's, so it's a really good use of technique to um, to bring the sport front and centre, and, and and as well, I think it really gives that sense of the speed. 
Oh, no, so I, I love that shot. It's a great shot. Um, how about this one? So this is Luge. Um, is, is this still the, the yeah. Youth Olympics? Yeah. Yeah, this is the Youth Olympics, um, and Luge is really, really, really tricky to photograph because they come past you so fast. Um, you could often miss them if you're not really concentrating. And um, this shot, I was. I had this patch of light and I was just like, I've got to get the luge guy in that exact patch of light. And when they're going so fast, it's a lottery. <laughs> you know, there's some, they're up there, they're down here, they're up there. But having the ability of 20 frames per second was just changed the way that I could photograph this. So on this one, did you, did you pre-focus? And yeah. then, and then fire the. So you you are you're only really asking the camera just to, just to burst and, and capture at that point because you you're taking the focusing sort of element away from it and just saying yeah this is where I want to focus this is where I want it sharp, and then letting it do its thing. Absolutely. I mean, if you if you also if you hit the shutter button when you see them you'll miss them. So you have to start before they're <laughs> even in the frame. So you're listening out for the sound of the luge coming around the track, and then you you just you've got to burst, and eventually you get a good one like this. And yeah, and and again, I guess you're you're reliant on so many things coming together. You know, no cloud passing in front of the the sun at that moment where it dulls the the ability yeah. to highlight the athlete and so on. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> uh, how how many goes at it did you have to have? Oh, oh, hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That makes me feel better. It makes me feel better. Um, okay, so we're at Roland Garros now. Yep, that's good. Um, yeah, Nadal at Roland Garros. I think this this was semi final um, this year. Um, I love this shot because the shadows just so crisp and long. And at this time of day, they actually they moved the Roland Garros um, time of year due to COVID. And it meant mm. that the sun was a lot lower all day long. So you were able to get shots like this, not just at the end of the day, but during you know, the middle of the day. Um, so more, more challenging for the, for the players, I guess, having a low sun in the sky, but great for yeah. photography. Yeah. <laughs> and this was, we were... This was shot on a very long lens. I think it was, we were allowed up to the very top of the stands um, this year. And I think this was shot on a 400 mil with a two times converter. So the 800 mil. Wow, okay. About really high. It was still pin sharp. Now, what about this one? Where is this? So this this was the Ryder Cup in Paris, um, or just on the outskirts of Paris, yeah. And it's Jordan speak of uh, the USA team. Um, the key things about this were, for me is being able to photograph on the backswing of a golfer. You know, if you were doing this with not a mirrorless camera. You could you couldn't take that picture, you know. You everyone would start shouting at you um, yeah, sure. for distracting them. Um, so having the ability to have a silent camera to capture images like this. And the other reason I really like this picture is it often, you know, we spoke about backgrounds and stuff. So often we don't have a good background, or there's something in the way. Um, but by just using the grass in this picture. I was able to sort of create a background. Mm. Yeah, the, the golfer in the sky have become the background rather than, the, yeah, so oh, it, it really works. Is. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. Um, and yeah, I, th I think the these kind of shots wouldn't have been possible, as you say, with the, the traditional SLR shutters because of the, the fact you'd be putting the players off and so you'd get ejected. Um, so I guess 
the the silent aspect is, is lending itself to a bit more uh, creativity in terms of shots that we haven't seen from these kind of sports before. Um, Absolutely, yeah, it, it, it's great. I think I'd still be quite scared even breathing so close to uh, <laughs> to a player and, and getting told off. But um, no, amazing, amazing shot. So this, so this from um, the London Marathon this year, this, this, the winner of the London no, Nobody would believe this is England, right? With, with rain in the, in the shot. Nobody yeah. would believe that. <laughs> um, this was, I was, um, I had a very fortunate position this year at the London Marathon. I was actually in a timing car. So the, in front of the runners, they have a timing car so they know if they're on pace and so on and so forth. And I was allowed to sit in the back of it and um, photograph from there for the whole race. Um, I love this picture. I think basically, it's, sorry? So basically you got to stay dry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. That, that, was, that was the key to it. Um, but I love this picture because I think this was the last... Um, so she... This was the last lap before she 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 won. She's just on her own. There's no one else even competing with her, and she's so much further ahead than anyone else. Um, but I was in the back of this car, and I wanted to get like um, a different angle, a bit lower. So I was able to put the camera down on the boot of the car and flip the screen out, and I was actually able to sort of photograph it at a more unique lower angle making her look bigger no i think it, it it really works doesn't it um particularly with that that funneling element back down to back down the mouth looks really good and this is sale gp is it is yeah, that, that sydney that is yep yeah, yeah yeah i was on a so they have spectator boats around um, the event. So there, there's quite a few of them all floating around, so people can get really close to the to the action. Um, and I, my my position for the day was to be on one of the boats. Um, and I like this picture just because it, you've got crowd interaction. A lot of sports photography is just focused on the athlete, but. You know, I like all the guys peering, taking pictures and mm -hmm. the event happening with Skyline. Yeah, it's not a bad frame, is it? Not, not a bad uh, place to work for the day. And this, this is a magazine shoot yeah, for this was, Sports Illustrated. Yeah, this, this was, um, yeah, so this was a cover shoot for Sports Illustrated, obviously. Um, so I was, it's in Italy. I was sent to Italy and um, the magazine asked me to basically photograph her in a very snowy area. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I got there, there was no snow on the ground anywhere. Um, she wasn't really training because there was no good snow anywhere, this spot that we were at. Was, and the snow in the back of this um, picture was the only bit of snow I could find in the mountains that was miles away. So I actually had, and to get an angle on it, the only way I could photograph it was I had to shoot a 200 mil lens, which I generally don't shoot portraits on that sort of focal length, but I needed to use that focal length to pull in the snowy background of the mountain behind. Um, and we actually built a stage that she would stand on that was about three meters high. So I could get low enough with the right length of lens to actually get any snow in the background of the picture. So. Oh, very good. And this is your last shot, Tom. Yeah. So this was photographed for Sony for the um, launch of the A1, um, shot on the A1. Um, this picture, I I was just blown away again with the autofocus on the camera. Um, in gymnastic, this movement is so fast. It's literally 
second. You, you, you almost don't see it so fast. And the IAF was just so fast to grab onto her eyes. And it, especially with a bar in front of it, you know, it was just mm. incredible. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Um, Jed, we're going to go through a reasonable pace because actually we've got quite a lot of questions coming in. I'm conscious that um, oh, okay. people, want, people want to hear your, your thoughts on their questions. So, oh, Okay, right, I'll bang through mine. <laughs> uh, right, uh, Lords, uh, Cricket Ground, The Ashes. Uh, I'm going to give you bullet points. Um, I love this. this is the, the looking through the crowd in the, gra in the main grandstand um, and, and obviously silhouetting the... Uh, silhouetting the uh, crowd um, and it's quite a nice angle isn't it yeah it's a nice frame and again back to what Tom was saying with his sale GP picture I think that you know yeah. bringing the crowd in and, and showing that yeah. element um, rather than it just being a flat kind of it's just, just about green the space. It's, uh, <laughs> pretty dull so yeah fill, fill, fill the space basically if there's space yeah. in, the, in the frame fill it with something uh, and it will help the uh, help the image. No, it looks really good. All right, what's this? All right, yeah, yeah. So that's FA Cup final, twenty nineteen, and th and this was the first. This is like Tom's uh, skating picture. This is the first uh, the first match I did with a snowman, basically. Right. Um, and luckily, it was uh, it was something like six nil or something five nil in the final. And uh, as long as you were doing Man City attack, you got a lot of pictures. That's one of them. Plenty of goal goal sellies to yeah exactly. Yeah. What's next? Uh, right, so glorious Goodwood racing. Um, this is basically uh, anyone can take this picture uh, if you, if anyone's interested. The um, this is standing on the road which is next to the course near the start oh, right. and it's a dry stone or nearly kind of mildly dry stone wall um that is uh is between the road and the race course so anyone can take that shot um and it just provides a different different angle really um than the usual right next to the action absolutely yeah so were you not let in or <laughs> I just, uh, it was, this is the last race, so I was standing near my car to then go. Okay. <laughs> What's this one? All oh, right, so this is Surrey Classic, uh, is that what it's called? Uh, pro, just the pro race that starts oh. in London, goes out to Surrey Hills, come back, comes back and finishes on the Mall. This is going through Dorking. Um, nice, tight streets, kind of old, old buildings, not, um, floral displays so mm. I just put my camera on the top of my monopod extended it out and wait for the peloton to come through really to so that every part of the frame is filled apart from that kind of annoyingly white sky at the top it, there is tons of stuff to look at in every part of the frame. color yeah. yeah exactly what's this one all right here we go uh, this is another kind of uh this is also winter winter olympic um, event that me and Tom did and this is another absolute split second I, I mean I can't tell you how quick this is um, the uh, ice dancing may not um, appear to be super speedy but it really is and obviously they don't say right is everyone ready I'm now going to throw her up in the air it, it, it just happens and you've got to be ready and hopefully you're uh, in the right position, basically. Right spot, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, right, so cricket. So this is also another image that anyone could have taken. Um, but I also um, predict that this image will never, ever happen again. Because strangely enough, we can't really herd a 40-stone stag um, and tell it where to sit. But basically, this is in Bushy Park in southwest London, Teddington uh, Cricket Club and uh, a stag sat near them. So I, I'm, I'm a long way away. I'm on a, I'm on a two to six, uh, the two to six lens. Um, okay. I'm, a, I'm, I'm a very long way away. I'm like on F22 or something like that. And I would argue wow. it's, still, it's still a bit, I'd, it'd be still a bit better, better depth of field, but the sun came out perfectly, but it wasn't on 
the background is hedges and trees and stuff and it wasn't on there and then he hit a fall but it's uh, that's my favorite shot of last year I would say and it's just me going to the park and knowing there was a a match on and just creating yeah, nice. it's, it's a it's a it's a stunning image and the fact you've, you've still got the ball in the shot as well yeah and, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah yeah just <laughs> What's this? Oh yeah, Winter Olympics. Again, it's absolute super speedy um, ski jump event, which is, they're like bullets going through the sky, but um, it, the background is uh, dark trees and, and I was all framed up and ready to pick them out of the sky and then it suddenly started to snow. So that, that's effectively what makes the shot. Uh, it would have been quite nice, jet, jet black background. But the, uh, the snow falling down completely and utterly is, uh, makes Very it, cool. Yeah. Very cool. What's this? Oh, right. This is just, I don't know why I picked this one. It's because, I know why. It's because, um, it's because I got about 47 frames on it because the ball bounced and I was on the, the A9 Mark II, I think. And this, the lens is the 13518. And, uh you they were both facing me obviously and the ball was bouncing but it that i haven't touched this image at all this is completely full frame i haven't touched any part of it and it it just worked out that the i could fire off tons of them and here's one of them uh elliot kachogi when he did his two hour uh, sub two hour marathon this is the last hundred meters as though the pace runners in the background are going mad uh, with joy and excitement. And Elliot Kipchoge is um, uh, also enjoying the fact that he obliterated to Making history, yeah. Yeah, it was just really, it was such a good event. That was so brilliant. Obviously, it helped the fact that he uh, broke the record, but that, it, yeah. that uh, it worked. And, and the reason why it worked probably is because of the pace runners in the background. Yeah, um, we're going to need to need to cover off some of the questions. I think. Oh, okay. So yeah, let's go to some questions. So yeah, so first up, we had um, a guy called Gary looking to buy some kit for surf photography. So, so for surfing, so what would you what would you suggest? Tom, you go. You've probably done surf photography, haven't you? Uh, no, not really, actually. But I would say long lens um you know some uh, the two to six would be a great lens yeah. to go for um give you give you real long lens because unless you're on a boat um out in the sea i guess if you're looking to shoot it from land you're going to need that length i'd say if you can't afford the long lens depending on where you are in the world get in the sea and um, use a wide lens. Uh, now, obviously, you you might encounter um, being hit by surface <laughs> or getting a wet camera. But the uh, it, what what would be cheaper, the housing for the camera or a or a more expensive long lens? Yeah. Uh, so Jamie asks, um, just left uni last year and looking to join a, an agency to shoot sport. Um, what are the kind of best steps to get in into the industry that way any okay go, go for that so we've, got, we've got less than a minute guys so right, okay. what i'll say is these questions that have come up if if uh, tom and and jed if you can um make yourselves available to to myself afterwards what we'll do we'll put the questions to you and we can feed them up onto the chat um okay. so that the guys get get their answers um but yeah i I'm, i just was so fascinated by uh, by your images and, and by you know getting some understanding from you earlier that we, we've kind of run over in terms of timing for, for questions but thank you very much for your time this morning chaps like I say if you can just um, hang on online with me uh, to, to answer some of these questions and we'll put them on the chat that'd be much appreciated okay. um, and where, where can these these people find you guys what what so we've got um, Instagram, best place to find Jed yeah. Lester. Yeah, yeah. Ram. Jed Lester and uh, Twitter, same with Tom, I would imagine. Uh, either that, I'll be at West Ham tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you very much again, guys. Cheers. Cheers.